Okay, so this is uh, Why I Love Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray, um, serialised in 1847 to 1848. It's a great novel, um, a great English novel, one of the greats, I would think. It's a big book, 650 pages. And it's just a wonderful kind of... um, sometimes uh, comfortable and sometimes biting critique of um you know english society and 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 really just everybody's up for judgment um under thackeray's gaze here you know we're all potentially hypocritical sometimes we're all um capable of judging others harshly well more harshly than we judge ourselves um we're all capable of mean-spiritedness um you know and and thackeray kind of lays that bare and looks behind the facade um as he as he sets up his narrator is kind of the uh the puppet master and he's going to have these puppets play out and show you um you know really how we all are behind the uh behind the public persona that we uh, we address the world with you know there's really much more going on and a really good example of that straight away is um in a in a I've talked about this in another audio but in a in a an aside really about a third of the way through the book um Thackeray's narrator note, notes uh, a, a person he used to know um a fellow that used to slight and do wrongs, just small things, um, do wrongs to his neighbours, um, so he could then go and apologise for them, um, you know, without them knowing that. So he could then go and apologise, and, and the result of that was they thought him to be humble and very honest, um, which I always loved that as a little touch, you know. Uh, it's a lovely little piece of, um, you know, understanding the psychology of people and the way we work. Um, you know, we don't like to admit it, but we're always kind of strategizing socially. Um, there's a lovely touch at the beginning of the book where Becky has been at, um, you know, Miss Pinkerton's school and it's traditional for the girls to get uh, um, a dictionary, Dr. Johnson's dictionary when they leave. And because Becky is, uh, um, you know, she's she's kind of an imposition on the school, really. They don't really want her there. And when she leaves... Um, she's not given an, an, a dictionary. And then one of the sisters actually rushes out to give Becky a dictionary and she flings it back at them through the window. So this, the rejection of not only the school and the school system, really, but also if the dictionary written by Samuel Johnson stands for a kind of patriarchy, you know, if it, you know the, 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 the lexicon is in male hands, if you like, um, then Becky's throwing back of the dictionary as a kind of symbolic rejection of the rules, you know, um, the meaning of the system codified by men has been thrown back by Becky out, you know, 17, 18 year old Becky out of the window. Um, and that sets the tone for really how she's going to play the game in the future, which is to completely play the patriarchy at his own game. You know, um, you know, she, you could say that she's been, you know, she's been dealt a tough hand with no means, um, you know, she has no family status. She has nothing really, uh, apart from her own guile and wit and intelligence and 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 beauty as well. She's she's attractive, um, and she's going to use that. Uh, she's going to use that in her understanding of of of, of psychology, and she's going to use that to play the patriarch in its own game. And it's fascinating to watch. The trouble with that, though, interestingly, is that in the process of that survival which you could say, you know, this survival game that Becky is playing, um, there are casualties. Becky creates her own list of casualties, you know, the people that she sometimes inadvertently and sometimes not quite inadvertently hurts in the process of, of, um, of you know, of making her way and, and kind of, you know, creating her fortune and all the things she does. Um, so that's really interesting. And that's why, it's a, you know, it's a fun book, but it's also, you know, in, in, interesting in psychologically and philosophically, I would say, as well. There are points that come up where you could really get into very good debates about it. So I love it for that. Um, there are fantastic characters. Dobbin, who's in love with Amelia, but is a bit kind of um, weak about it. Amelia herself, who is just sappish and very, very <laughs> difficult to, you know, you want to, you want to, you want to just shake her sometimes because she's so in love with George. Um, but very realistic as well for a, you know a young person who's in love um, and a bit deluded with it. Um, 
you know the character of Miss Crawley is fantastic. You know she's she's written so beautifully, so vividly. Her, you know, um, her 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 pretense of um, you know friendship with Becky as though that's on an equal play. You know, an equal footing, if you like, that they are equals in some way and they are genuine friends. When really Becky's in service to her, and when Becky finally marries. Miss Crawley's nephew, Rawdon, um, Miss Crawley's horrified, absolutely horrified um, that, that, you know, a commoner would marry her nephew and marry into the family. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was all hypocrisy. Um, that's a lovely touch. Um, you know, it's full of these, sometimes, as I say, sometimes they're pretty brutal. Sometimes they're, they're you know, the consequences for people's actions are tough. Other times there's, the, you know, just kind of, um, you know, playful mocking but you know i i think this is a this is a a fun book but also a serious book as well and it and it and it's you know beneficial to read it i think it really shines a light on certain aspects of psychology and another thing i would say and one of the things i love is that even though this book is very much of its time you know it's 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 written in 1847 to 1848 but it's set around it's set in the time from about 1814 to um about 1830 so it's very of that time yes but it's so modern as well it so speaks to our own um, vanity our own greed our own duplicitousness our own strategizing our own self-image um you know kind of uh, mania if you like it really speaks to that that you know you take away the the, the, the certain you know formalities of speech the, the way they dress the lack of a mobile phone um, and people are very similar we will recognize certain things that these people were doing that we still do um, and, I, and one of the things I, I have said is that um, I think I think Thackeray would have been very comfortable understanding the idea of virtue signaling <laughs> the idea that we all we all have this potential double-sidedness to us and yet at the same time we all, all want to show how decent we are it's very important for us to have social standing and to be regarded you know morally well i suppose you know um it's a brilliant book i absolutely love it it's rich as i say it's psychological it's philosophical it's fun um, it's sometimes poignant there are that because it's very, um, satirically, you know, kind of, um, you know, cr- a cr- judgmental in some ways, you know, critiquing things when Thackeray does point out the point, you know, the, 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 the tender moments, they, they stand out and you really remember them. So, um, you know, little touches like Dobbin buying, uh, Amelia, the piano and, and, um, you know, there there are little things in there that you know that that that, that balance. They don't really balance out the, the kind of harsh judgment, but they 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 you know they do they do remind us that we're not always all bad. But it's a brilliant book, and that's why I love it. Um, well, that's just a snippet of why I love it. But I hope you've enjoyed that, and um, more to come soon. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>